Hello and welcome back to another episode of A Whole New Pod, a podcast all about Disney Channel original movies. Again, I'm your host, Lucas Melby. And I'm your other host, Jacob Telejohn. And this is a very special episode because this is actually the final A Whole New Pod episode, at least in the format you're used to, because that's oh. right, baby, we're all about bite. We're going to be giving you Disney yes. Channel original movie reviews in six seconds. In six, six seconds, seconds is just going to be like... It's Quince. All right. <laughs> That's a wrap. Because, yes, we've got a whole new pod. We're all about the cutting edge. Our Twitter account always popping off. <laughs> hey, we took a year to get onto YouTube. But this time, we're going to be first in the door on Byte, which is already yeah. late to the game because it's the follow-up to Vine, and it's already it had its lunch eaten by TikTok. Speaking of our um, our podcast on Byte, what would be your, your six-second little bit for uh, for this episode? Anything guy can do, a girl can do better. I like that. I was thinking that too. Why? Well, because I, yeah, I said it before the yes. podcast. Yeah. But at least Jacob I, I was, is nice enough you, you, not you, to you. not to steal my bit. What no. would be what would be yours? <laughs> oh golly, I'm trying to think of like Kobe something. Bryant died in a helicopter Kobe crash. Bryant Breaking dead. news for Five. two days ago. <laughs> I, I am. I'm kind of hooked on that. But yeah, Kobe died in, in a crash. So just kind of give you an idea of when we're. Uh, recording this kobe died like 20 minutes yeah. ago dating it peace. we're dating Mama. the podcast for the week is happening as well as for all time yeah space yeah, jam 2 officially canceled it's sad actually i don't know if it's gonna, gonna, gonna be with like with lebron i think that was supposed to be with lebron but, but i mean michael jordan was not the only no, basketball player that's true you had patrick ewing and yeah you ain't charles barkley <laughs> you a phony <laughs> That's such a great movie. It's not. Good, okay movie. That's <laughs> great a, line. It's such an okay movie. Check my letterbox score of Space Jam. <laughs> you, I need to go rate it. Hey, have you been doing some more in the last couple uh, weeks? Have you been doing some I'm more always, ratings? I'm always remembering movies that I've seen to give three stars or three and a half stars. Fat underscore tomato. But speaking of a movie that I also might give three stars to. Three out of, of five or three yeah, out of ten? Three out of five. Three out of five. That's is... The movie we watch today, Motocross, Motocross, which a play, and not very uh, surprising or reading too deep, a play on motocross and cross dressing. Oh, what? Motocrossed. Oh, man. I didn't think I'd be blowing anybody's mind, but that's oh, why I, I have Jacob on the that. show. I never, I never, I never would have You just thought I was like, together. hey, it's about dirt bike racing. <laughs> I guess. Well, That's interesting. It's about dirt bike racing. Kids aren't going to pick up on that. It's for us. Yeah, apparently, it's for I'm us still a kid. Distinguished adults. <laughs> Speaking of it being about dirt bike racing, we get that very quickly because as the movie starts, it's a hard car opening. There's guitar squeals. There's riffing. It's like butt rock. It's yeah. We're seeing immediately yeah. a dirt bike racer tearing up some track, mud flying everywhere. Some dirt. And yeah, some soil. Some really dirt, ripping the if soil. If you will. And then. We get an intercut of this between the dirt biker and, and a, a cheerleader. cheerleader. Cheerleading contest. To really hit with home 1,300 that cheerleaders. The distinguishing between guy stuff and girl yeah. stuff. Yeah, that's what it was, too. After this all plays out, we're introduced to our main character, Andrea, who for most of the movie goes by Andy, who is a yeah. cheerleader. Yeah. Her brother, Andrew, which yes. they're... Maybe twins? Twins, they say that. It's at least it, said at eh. one point in the movie, but it also could have been a lie in that scene, so I'm not yep. sure. But I think yep. they're probably twins. Andrew was the dirt biker, or he is a dirt biker. And then they also, we meet their mom and dad. Later on, we'll meet the little brother, Jason, who is an yep. engineer. And like any decom, we get a bunch of characters right away, and that's most of the characters we need to know for this movie. For the most part, there's maybe two or three other names but yeah and we get a setup of relationships between the characters where the dad was with andrew the dirt biker and the mom was with andy the cheerleader yeah. andy won some trophy but the dad just doesn't have the doesn't time of care. day it's all about dirt bike practice it's all about yeah just the grind keeping it up doesn't care that the daughter won a trophy or you know did well because they run a family racing team. Yes. They're the, the Carsons, and it's Carson Racing. The dad quit his job so we could focus on the racing team. Oh, shit. I forgot about that. Yeah. And it's very much focused on getting a sponsorship, or as they say, a factory, factory sponsorship. Factory sponsorship, yep. If Andrew wins at some big upcoming race, then the, the family is set. I'm yep. not very yeah. knowledgeable about dirt bike racing, but... I think you can kind of view it as Spendy, any kind of expensive with sponsorship stuff with, or, yeah. you know, 
Bowling. I bet the Alley Cats, oh if they got us sponsored by insert bowling company name here, then they just, would have had the shoes. Just helps and the eliminate balls. exactly like the cost of all that stuff. Yep. Kind of an opposite message of Brink, where Brink getting a sponsorship was selling out and being a loser. <laughs> and this, it is all they want is to get sponsorship to be a corporate sellout. Yeah. So I found that kind of funny how. In the, the 20 or so movies since, we have another equally extreme sport movie, but this time the major conflict is completely the opposite of one Jason Brinkman's. I think that was his name. Brink. Brink. Brick. Brink. Brinkman. Yeah. Brick Brinkman. So now that we have all the characters established, then we see that mom and dad are going off somewhere for the day to yes. the city. And this is where Jacob was... Maybe providing a little too much details about some of his extracurricular Yikes. viewing. Where, Oof, Us and your father are going away for the weekend, so you guys take care of yourself. And brother and sister being like, oh, yeah. yeah. They got a little weird. But not in the way you think, because it's cutting to more dirt biking and butt metal. Whoa! And butt stuff. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but this, so the people racing here are Andrew and Andrea. Yeah. Andy, they're racing against one another. And Andy is, oh, Andy, yeah. it's very clear that she has ridden dirt bikes before. Yes. She is keeping up with Andrew. Oh, yeah. She, she's, she's a good rider. Yeah. She's keeping up. But surprisingly, Andrew, who you would think would be the more accomplished rider, eats it very bad at one point. Literally flies through like a fence, crashes through okay. a fence and breaks it. And yep. then we cut to immediately after that the hospital where he's, Andrea... do, he's done something with his knee, and, and he, he alludes to that when he's laying there after he's gone through the fence. And yep, Andrea is sitting in the waiting room with Jason, the little brother, being like, I'm so dead. And then mom and dad come out where they have gotten back from their day in the city to take him to the hospital. And they're pissed because Andrew is injured, which means he's not yeah. going to be able to race. But he's also, he hasn't broken his leg. And I don't know why he couldn't have just broken it. Why don't they just say that in the story? So you kind of get like an idea that maybe he could heal up like really, really soon. So he'd be relevant for him racing later on, but sure. it's not. Well, we'll see later on that, or shortly after this, that the big race that, or I don't even know, the race in this uh, movie is very unclear because it seems to just happen it's forever. Always, it's always. It's, it's, yeah, it's I described it ending. as the Woodstock of dirt bike <laughs> racing where everybody just seems to be gathered at one spot and it's just race after race. It's not even really... They talk about a point system, like, but they don't yeah, go there's, into there's it. There's no like like elimination. There are different like sets. Like they have like different numbers. Uh, like, they have different heats. I think is what they call them. Yeah. Which I'm fine that they don't go like With too far skill into levels it. Levels or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they do. I feel like in Alley Cat's Strike, they talk a lot about the rules of bowling. Yeah. But at the same time, to have some kind of stakes in it, where it's it's not a tournament, but it's some kind of points based cup system or whatever, and somehow it will equal it to get it in a sponsorship whatever the case is, that that race ends up getting moved up, which then really puts the, the crunch on that Andrew's not going to heal up in time. Yeah, so they, they need to find a racer by Saturday. Yeah, and before we see what happens with that, Dad gets to have a, a talking with Andrea, one of many he has in the, the movie that basically amounts yeah. to, I don't want you to race partially because I don't want you to get hurt but yep. mostly he's like I want you to stick to girly things yeah. that is very clearly the message coming out from this movie from the dad yeah so then we see at home that the dad I think this is where he says that I think this is the point where he quits his job so that he has to go to Europe because all the American racers are already signed with teams so he has to go all the way to Europe to find some foreign racers to find one that will uh, agreed to be on Carson Racing. And while he's packing up to leave, Andrea says, hey, she's really having this hit her hard because it's, I guess the family like is all tied up in this racing thing, yeah. which seems a lot to put on Andrew, let alone Andrea as it comes later on. But she feels that her life is in shambles. She's extremely emotional yeah. and dramatic. And we even get a little emotional music pretty early on in this movie. And she's just like, ah, oh, I need to race. Let me race, Dad. It's all my fault. And the dad's she like... She just wants, yeah, just wants no. to help the family. No. Do girl stuff. And then Andrew's no. like, but Dad, she rips. And I said, no, that's a different movie. That's Rip Girls <laughs> and it's about surfing. There is a lot of talk like that. A lot of surfer talk or, you know, 
Just extreme, like, bruh, like, dude, West Coast gnarly. Talk, yeah. So then while the dad is away, the family, this is where they get the letter saying that the big race has been moved up for reasons. And if you don't get into the first leg of the race yeah. or the competition, you're then you're disqualified. And, and this is where they're like, oh, shoot, you know, like, we need to try to contact Papa to let him know because he's hunting for the European biker. But they have no way to contact him. No. So Andrea starts hatching a plan that she feels that she's going to be able to do this race. So to prove herself to, I think partially to herself, to show herself that she can do it, but also to her brothers, she yeah. goes to a dirt bike <laughs> track to show that she can hang with the hashtag boys. And she basically just rolls up on her bike, takes her helmet off to let her hair shake out because she's got longish blonde hair. And the guys say some, I don't even remember what they say. They're basically like, exactly. girls suck. And she's Cat like, calling. yeah, no. well, eat my dirt. And, and then, then, then she, yeah, she spits dirt up on him. And then we cut to racing s- scenes. And-, mm-hmm. and she does pretty well, but eventually she gets kind of, I don't know the proper terminology, but checked by another racer with his yeah. bike. And she flies off and, well, I guess she can't hang, hang with, with the boys. The boys. Yeah. So then uh, she tries to hide the fact that she was racing by she has like her dirty biking clothes and she's bringing them inside. Yeah. And I just found this so funny that her mom says, hey, what do you got there? And Andy says, oh, uh, I was just some old clothes. I'm going to donate them to the poor. The poor. <laughs> she says that. And that's, I just found it. I don't know. I right. think that's something people say. But now I just feel like more people just say I'm just going to donate them. But specifically to the poor. Uh, And then she also uh, has an injury, some road rash or something that her mom later on sees. And then her mom's like, hey, don't race. And her brother, Andrew, tells her that basically what happened, that she got kind of checked like that by the racers because she was a girl. Not saying that it was because she's bad. It's because those guys wouldn't want her to be better than them. So they were really sticking it to her. So then we get a really great scene where the next day we see just it was so weird. I don't even really remember what they're talking about, but it's an establishing of what Andrew was wearing that day. And he was wearing some baggy yellow like hooded sweatshirt, a backwards baseball cap and then sunglasses. And he's walking around on his crutches. And that was to establish, hey, this is what he's wearing. And then we cut to. It's a little mysterious, but it's very clear that what we're seeing is Andy, his sister, dressed up with his exact same clothes. It's it's pretty funny. And like a back, backwards ball cap and the sunglasses, so it's a perfect disguise, and she's at some kind of dirt bike shop. And the, the sweatshirt or whatever she's wearing, I don't know why there's one to exist to begin with, but there's two, and I think later on we see three of these blue and yellow Big, baggy. Hey, you know what? Sometimes sweat, if you really sweatshirts. like an article of clothing, you just got to buy backups to oh, make sure man. you got them. So she's at the, the shop and she's talking to the shop owner being like, hey, I need these parts and oh, wear your boots. So she goes over to get some boots. And then who walks in? I thought it was like they were in on it together, but they yeah, weren't. Yeah, because that, then Andrew what, comes in, too. walking around in his crutches. And the shop owner, who is my favorite character in the movie. He's like high or like... Jimmy, the shop owner, yeah. He's kind of burnout dude bro where he's just, his, he's not all there. He's like, whoa, what happened? Where'd you get those crutches? You get an injury in like a second? And Andrew says, what? No, what are you talking about? He, he asks him if he's... Something about, like, kind of getting high. Like, if he was leaving the windows closed or something. While he was spraying air fresheners. (laughs) Which is, I guess, the closest, yeah, a Disney Channel original movie you can get to seeing somebody. Hey, dude, what you smoking? Yeah. Uh, And then we just get a a series of back and forth where one will come up to the counter where the other disappears. The mom comes in. She starts to see double and it's all humorous the guy the shop owner takes off his glasses because if you think you're hallucinating it's got to be your glasses and not oh my glasses i had a smudge here where it looked like you had crutches for it yeah and it finally culminates in andrew putting it together and seeing his sister and follows her to the dressing room and i don't know if it was meant to be a dramatic reveal because i think everybody should know what's going on but then she takes off the sunglasses and the baseball hat to show that she's cut her hair yeah that's why part of the act where she was able to look so much like him. And Jason, the little brother, comes over and sees what's going on. And she tells her brothers that, hey, 
I got my hair cut. I can just pretend to be Andrew and race. And they're like, no. mm, that could work, but it won't work out exactly. No, they 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 don't um, rat her out to the mom. And as she comes out of the um, the dressing room, this is where the mother, I think, maybe sees her for the first time, like in a reflection in the mirror. And then when she, like, turns around to see, like, what's going on, Andy's gone. And then she asks, like, the little brother, who is your brother just talking to? N- nobody. I didn't see anything. So they're, they're, they're going with it for now. They're running with the... But realistically, and they, she starts to have some kind of, I say in my notes, here begins her long con of tricking her mom. Because she's cut her hair. Yes. Her mom's going to be like, why did you cut her hair? But it shows her that night at home where she's got a big towel on her head Wrapped as her if, head. you know, she's holding up her hair just to be dried. Just got the shower, yep. And I just thought that was so funny. If they don't carry on with it for really anything past this scene, but if it's just throughout a good portion of the movie, she just has to keep concocting ways to hide that she's cut her hair to her mom. Yeah. But really, the mom is getting suspicious already with some of the things that have been going on. And I think Andrea says, I'm going into the mall early tomorrow morning. And then the mom's like, hmm, okay. And all it takes is her to approach Jason, the little brother. And then Jason, she leans on him a little bit and he immediately caves and confesses to everything. Yeah. So then the next morning, Jimmy, the shop owner, who I guess Andy had called to say, hey, I need you to pick me up because my dad isn't around, comes to pick her up and the bike. But then this is where mom intervenes to say, uh, nah, uh, 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 and Andy's like, oh, mom, I, I could really do it. But nope, it's not happening. Jason, the little brother's sitting at the breakfast table or something because it's early in the morning. And Jason's like, but mom. Andy's really good. And mom tells Jason that, hey, girls can't race. Actually, girls can race. They just can't race with boys. Oh, no. It's it's just not done. <laughs> and then we get a great line from Jason where he says, but mom, we learn in school about women's rights. Yes. And then it's just like, whoa. Dang, yeah. Checkmate, Love mom. That. That, was, that was Sexist that was much? No. <laughs> and then this is one of like a couple times where the parent figures are like, <sighs> Fuck. <laughs> yeah, and that's definitely a running thing throughout the uh, the whole movie that girls shouldn't be. Maybe not that they can't, or some some of them believe that they can't or shouldn't shouldn't be doing the, what guys are doing. Obviously, yeah. So then, mom eventually gets easily convinced because she approaches Andy and says, "Hey, do you want to do this just because you feel bad for your brother, or because you really want to win?" And then Andy says, I don't know, which would let you let me race. Yeah. And then the mom's like, okay, fuck it. <laughs> yeah. so it's like, she didn't even need to give a right answer. The mom's just like, you know what? I Your want to help out. father's not going to be very happy, Andy. Yeah. And it's, hey, it's a family business. She wants to help out. So yeah. it's all good. So they keep yeah, it in the family. So they, yeah. So they hide it from dad for a while. Yeah. No Carsons are fucking losers. So the mom is in. True. On keeping it. Keeping it going. So far, the only character that we do not like at this point is the father. Yeah, the father is... too serious. He's... Even within the great uh, pantheon of, quote-unquote, unlikable parents in DCOMs, where sometimes being adults, seeing these characters, just like, actually, no, they seem pretty reasonable, but like, Halloween Town, we're supposed to hate Marnie's mom. Johnny Tsunami, we're supposed to hate his dad. dad. His dad is kind of crappy. But this dad really dials it up with... Yeah. I mean, we haven't dealt with too much sexism in Disney (laughs) Channel original movies so far, so that's uh, a big part of why he's so unlikable yeah but but characters always get a chance to redeem themselves he does he has a redemption to margie from zine on the sequel who i've forgotten her already bingo (laughs) so it's they go to the race again this is a race that just exists like forever it just takes over a a section of the countryside (laughs) and andy gets registered for the race and she only gets some minor suspicion because she's got like painted nails but she says oh that's to help with my grip speed or aerodynamics yeah. or and something. like people like start to believe it or eventually like believe that but like, we don't it's not like, quite a uh, stepsister from planet weird where we start to see everybody yeah, that would have been nails. great if all the the racers would have had different that would have been really fun but the nice thing about this movie is she does struggle to get better. She's yeah. just not immediately like great at everything. So yes. if it was the other way around where she immediately got good, great. it would have made then sense for them would've... to yeah, yeah, paint yeah. their nails. Yep. Yeah. And I, I, I think one of the characters actually says that. 
Yeah, the the love interest will meet yes. later on. But one thing that she gets a little worried about is that there's a guy from, I think, the factory or the people putting on the race that then decides the sponsorship. But then there's some teams or racers there that are already sponsored. I don't know. But he's like, hey, Andy, I want to want to learn about the man behind the helmet. Can I interview you sometime? And she's yeah. like, ah, but luckily, this guy always gets a phone call when he's trying to talk to Andy, who yeah, he thinks he, is We see Andrew. him on the phone at least twice, if not three times. He's a very popular fellow. Yes. So then it's race time, and unfortunately, Andy does not get off to a very good start because she gets caught in the gate, the gate that would drop down yeah, for the bikers she, she to go out. jumps the gun, so she gets stuck in that one and then gets, I think, even like a lap. I, yeah, I think that might be right, but she... At the very least, loses completely, yeah. and she's very disheartened by that. Next couple races aren't really much better either. Then uh, we meet Dean Talon, who yes. is extremely horny for the owner of his team. I think his name is Art Henderson, he just, and his daughter is Farron Henderson. That, he, that guy kind of reminds me of, um, from the Soapbox movie, kind of reminds me of the jerk dad. That kind of complained about the handbrake. Oh, yeah. The, the owner of the team. Yeah. Not Dean. Yeah. 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 No, see that it, this character still plays a very small role, but it is still more prominent than that other guy in Miracle and Lane 2. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I would, I, I do like the, mm, I, I, the suspicion. It, it it's is not quite it's, cigar it's much, chomping. It's pretty much the same character. It, I yeah, mean, but he's the purpose. Of, of marginally more prominent in this. Yeah, yeah. But Dean yeah, Talon, yeah. he's just love struck and he's just a goof. Farron wants nothing to do with him and he literally falls over one scene because he's so like, oh, she's so hot. Yeah. And to set up some of the connection that happens later on or just soon after this, Andy's mom was painting her nails, and then all these girls come Saw by. Saw her do it because their nails got chipped. My nail dirtier, got chipped. And something like that. It's weird because they're all dressed exactly the same. They're and part it, of the same crew. They're all wearing like yeah. some skimpy short shorts. And but they're all by Andy's trailer, which gives the impression to the other racers that ladies he's, like a, man. he's a chick man. And, 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 and they say like, all oh, those ladies are, you know, in their 20s. They never go for guys like us. Yeah, especially Andrew. <laughs> Andrew Carson, who lost the race he was yeah. in so far. So I, everybody just really wants to know the secret of how to get those older yeah, women. People are taking notice. Uh, then the second heat or the second race starts, and Andy, unfortunately, again, performs very similarly. I don't. I think she probably just gets the last place. But I guess what's important is she finishes the race, which allows them to continue on in the competition. Again, not super clear. But, of course, she's pissed and disappointed. Dean Talon is apparently amazing at racing. And then we start to see Andy taking notice of him. She's making some eyes towards Dean. Or Dean. Uh, He stops by and talks to Andy to say, like, hey, you know, you just got to keep at it. By the way, you seem to be really good with ladies, right? Yeah. Uh, So then Dean shows Andy his... His crib or his trailer, so to speak, where yeah. he already has a factory sponsorship. So I think Andy's like, why are you racing? And he's like, oh, hey, man, I just love the dirt. Uh, he doesn't say that. Uh, this is Should where we meet so Art Henderson, who is the owner of uh, Dean's team, who has a cane to further show that he's a mean old man. And yeah. then his daughter, Farron. This is a point where Andy says, ooh, is that tommy hilfiger perfume and she's like yeah how did you know oh my sister has it (laughs) it smells a lot better on you you, and then dean's like damn this guy making moves he got everything so dean tries to make a deal with annie that hey you give me girl advice and help me get with farron and i'll I'll give you racing advice better racer however andy says no and I don't really know why. It's just she needed to do this race to then allow for, like, the European racer to come in. Or yeah. I don't really know what the case was, why she would cut it off here. But then we get a mother-daughter moment where the mom says, I used to sing in a band. What? No way. Way. I totally sang in a band. And Andy's grandma, the mom's mom, said, no. hey, stop doing that. So the mom stopped. But she kind of has some regrets and she told herself she'll never let one of her children not live out their dreams. So so mom's kind of the goat in this movie. 
she's a hard contrast to terrible dad as yeah. pretty pretty cool mom. Yeah. So then Andy rushes right back to accept Dean's deal, having a deal with the Dean. Dean's deal. deal. I've got a, an angel on one shoulder and Dean, Dean on, on my the other. other. There you go. Uh, so then cue music montage of them going extremely off-road. But they're was, just... was this a song that I really liked or is this another one of those weird metal like... No, this, this was an actual like pop punky song yeah, that maybe really just seemed old. good in such stark contrast to all the other music that has been happening in the movie. If this is, yeah, if this is the one that I looked up. I think it had three million like listens. I think it was called We're at the Top of the World by the Juliana Theory. Check so, that song out. It's a real song, I guess. Yeah. So they're going far off-road, hitting big jumps and just tearing up dirt and everything. And ultimately, their whole excursion finishes off at a lake where then Dean takes his shirt off and yes. goes into the water and Andy's like, oh my gosh. And then <laughs> Dean's like, come on, take your shirt off. And he says, no, the sun messes with my skin. Yeah. Don't be such a girl. And Andy says, did you just call me a girl? So she goes fully clothed into the water. Well, with her biker clothes, that is. Pushes yes. Dean. And then they're kind of floating in the water face to face. And it I, seems I thought they were like going to kiss. A kiss I, I moment. And quite honestly, you want this is the too. most erotic <laughs> Disney Channel original movie we have Maybe it of is. all time, but it's no, it's definitely. such a weird thing where, you know, she looks boyish, but she could look girlish. So there could be like homoerotic, oh my like God. underlining, where it's like maybe Dean is like questioning his sexuality, but there's definitely. just like so much going on, and then it's it. like pretty heavy. But then it's just like cut, <laughs> no and, kiss scene, just but, cut. But this is the, the last water. time something like this. Happened, no, it's not. It? Yeah, it's. No. It gets a it's little just hot getting and heavy. Started. And I'm like, ooh, it, settle down, motocross. Yes. I wasn't ready to feel these things. <laughs> so then Andy, making good on her deal with Dean, bumps, and I say bumps in quotation marks, into Farron at the hotel she's staying at. Because, again, they're just like living <laughs> at this dirt bike rally, or at least the people who can't afford hotels. But Farron definitely can. Yeah. And she... Andy, that is, starts chatting up Farron, saying like, hey, what's like your type? He's trying to say like, hey, you should hang, don't you hang out with Dean? Is he like your boyfriend? And she's like, ugh, gross. No, Dean just cares about dirt bikes and he never changes out of his dirt bike clothes and I yeah. just don't like him at all. And this is, I, I was maybe giving her credit I, I, prior to this, but she just... Seem like really snotty and stuff. And no, then, yeah, she a hundred percent is the yeah. rich snotty girl. But, I, I I didn't get that vibe originally from her because then, but then at the end, she's like, "Well, he needs to be all about me, me, me." Stop well, you can tell me. she was bad because the first time we see her, she's talking on a cell phone, mm. and then she just she does see Dean fall over and say like, "What a dweeb." Yeah, but yeah, she dials it up. Like some characters in this movie where they just, if they're supposed to be bad, they can be yes. very bad. Yeah, so I, I didn't like her. I didn't like, I don't like the father. I don't like her. I don't like that whatever soapbox derby guy. And, uh, <laughs> so, and another uh, character to come soon. Yeah. Andy then regretfully tells Dean what she's learned and that basically Farron's ideal type is pretty much exactly French. the opposite of what Dean yes. is. Someone that likes to go, what did she say to like the Galleria? gallery or something, something or at least just changing something fancy to not wear like know. tap out shirts or <laughs> fox branded dirt bike shirts so dean yeah. is obviously bummed about this but he says he'll still help out with his end of the deal which is helping her train because because she has a lot of potential and she's getting really good and he's getting it's getting really good yeah I read the Wikipedia synopsis of this movie before watching it, and it was very confusing because it'd be like, <laughs> this character's pretending to be this guy, and this person doesn't know, and then this is introducing a bunch more characters, and I'm like, who is what? <laughs> blah, blah. So thankfully, watching the movie, it's much more clear. Yes. Uh, but Andy is very excited that Dean is still going to work with her, and responds by hugging him. Hugging, yes. This, Ooh, this is yikes. where... Yikes! This is where the Soapbox Derby guy um, sees it happening and like, there's something fruity about that one. He does not say <laughs> that. Though. That is very much he's like, something funny about that racer. Yeah, that's what he meant. Little queer, ain't he? Yeah. And, <laughs> and, and the, the daughter was kind of like, I don't know, like biting her lip, like kind of like into. Well, it's because she at this point had talked to Andy yeah. as Andrew and Andrew yeah. seems more in touch with 
feminine stuff or yeah. maybe more fully realized so or worldly. She's than... into her. She's like, he's just different. And the dad is, or the whatever, Soapbox Every Man is Art, not happy. Art Henderson, Mr. Art, Henderson. Okay, Mr. Henderson and the Hendersons. But uh, Mr. Talon is freaked out too and kind of Yeah, pushes... it's like, hey, if you felt any like potential homoerotic <laughs> yeah. stuff, it's, hey, no, this is what some people not... call a case of the not gays. That, yeah. Hey, guys can't hug, yeah. okay? Get off of me. And then and then she says, it'll never happen again. And then he, and then he says, you're right, it won't or something. <laughs> I was like, Jesus. Yeah, that's right. He does say that. Right? <laughs> I don't know if it does happen uh, again, even if she is in her non- boy persona <laughs> maybe after the movie it does hugging hugging <laughs> hugging touching squeezing so to speak forgive jacob we meant to say this at the top of the episode but jacob uh, has been nursing a cold for a couple of weeks i've been so. pretty good so far today but yeah. i'm dying now but he's was so committed to might get this up a little late from our normal schedule but getting this episode out on time jacob showing commitment for once in this podcast history <laughs> thank you i do what i can so then there's another race, and this was actually kind of, generally, there is a lot of racing in this, so I know I kind of criticized Johnny Tsunami for having too many Slang montages, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. but yeah. at least with this, there's at least stakes in it, and there's also, like, danger, because in this race, there is good action shots of, oh, at one yeah, point, no, I, I, there's, I, a, like, a double bike crash. Yeah, no, that, that looked legit. Like, and then they I show a shot from the ground that. of the racer, and, like, the bike is flying up over him, and it looks Dude, like it's it about was, to, like, hit him, yeah, and then yeah. they're like, okay, cut. Maybe it actually did hit him, but they didn't want to show that on the, the TV. The the television, if you will. The uh, ESPN, if you will. ESPN, of, of course, at this point, I do believe was still owned by Disney, so we do see ESPN branded microphones. Mul- multiple times. But not ESPN2, which, let's be real, would have been Dirt covering. Bike, 100% ESPN2. Yeah. Or, like, some other off ESPN brand. But in this race, she gets seventh, which I don't know exactly how many people were in it, but it is shown to be an improvement. Her brother Andrew calls her and says, like, hey, good job. So then Andy runs into Dean at the hotel restaurant, and he is so sad, just forlornly eating French fries. Yeah. Being like, sorrows away. I can't believe I can't be with Farron. Then some real, like, extreme romantic conflict here where Andy's like, I know what it's like to not be able to do yes. something or be with somebody. She She's definitely into him, you know, and for him helping her and stuff like that. Like, she's definitely into him but she obviously can't let him know that so she wants to help him in any possible way yeah so she is so committed to making the person she likes happy that she'll let him be with somebody that's not her yeah and the mom's like girl you got it bad but she makes good on trying to hook them up together because previously it had been brought up that she got some tickets in the mail when she was still at home. Yes. She calls a girlfriend and be like, clear your calendars, we're going to go see NSYNC. Yeah. But we get reminded about these tickets when Andrew's like, hey, don't you have a concert to go to this weekend? And Andy's like, oh, you should use them, Andrew. Any girl would love to go with you. Yes. Ding, ding, ding. So she concocts mm. this extreme next level scenario to get dean to be able to go with farron where andy calls uh farron saying that your dad wants to meet you downstairs like what kind of voice is she using that this girl is like mistaking her as her father she uses the voice changer to be like hey (laughs) we have your father please come downstairs something like so she's in the hotel lobby which then times to be when dean and andy Exit the elevator, and Annie says, I can't believe me. you want me to go to NSYNC. Come on, dude. I wouldn't oh, be right. caught dead there. And then Farron hears, oh, you got tickets to NSYNC? And he says, yeah. And he was trying to even convince me that they got a couple good songs. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, uh, I do think Disney owned or was somehow involved with the promotion of NSYNC. So, it's, hey, Digging a little deep here at Disney that you're implying that guys can't like NSYNC. Yeah. You're kind of Come splitting on. your market. Kind of having split messages uh, in this decom right here. Oof, but the plan goes off well. They go off to the concert. It's funny because Farron's like, actually, I need to go upstairs to change to my concert clothes. Yeah. So then some more races happen. Uh, she starts to do a little bit better. She actually wins one. 
And then they are celebrating after the race. And then we get the dramatic reveal that daddy's home, people. And Papa. Papa's not happy. No, and this is when we're introduced to a new character. Well, not quite yet. No. Because first he's just like, back up, we're going oh, home. Yes, yes, yes. So Dean yep, stops by yep. to say like, hey, sick, sick racing. And hey, thanks for the, you know what? Hey, I'll yeah. tell you about my night later. And, <laughs> and then she just starts crying. She's yeah, she's to fight back tears. Yeah, she's holding back tears. And, and I, I don't know if he picked up on that she was sad or not. I mean, it was pretty obvious, but yeah. I, he didn't really like, I don't know, like console her. Yeah, it's not really clear. He was too, he had too much of a, he was still too horny for Farron yeah. to pick up on but, his, but, but his bro's inner pain. But he said to her multiple times, you know, like, you're really good, you're great, you know. I, again, obviously, I thank you for what you did. And, <laughs> but, yeah, I, he, he could have been there for her in that moment, but he still obviously thought she was a dude. Yeah. So, wasn't, so wasn't dad looking. is shitty, and literally every person in the family is going, but dad, but dad, she was really good at racing. Aren't you no. proud of her? And he's like, yeah, that's awesome. But I told her not to do it, and I don't want her to get hurt. But the last thing he says is, if she gets found out, I'll be the laughing stock of the dirt bike. He cares more about himself, the self centered son of a yep. bitch. Very clearly. It's all about the Carson family racing, but it's more about the patriarch of the Carson family. Yes. So then mom gives dad a talking to about how he's being a hypocrite because he should be happy that Andrea is doing well. And that if he's worried about Andrea getting hurt. Why isn't she, he worried about Andrew getting hurt True. doing something so dangerous? True. So she teaches him on hypocrisy and feminism. And then the task kind of, again, like the mom earlier is like, fuck. <laughs> you right, you right. So he sits down at the table, has a full pint of ice cream that he's just eaten from the <laughs> container. The, the most clear sign of depression and uh, inner conflict. Yeah. And Jason is sitting there eating i think some ice cream of his own and then he says do you think i'm a hypocrite and jason has a very good line that is also listed on the imdb page for this movie quote of the movie huh? where he says am i a hypocrite well if that's a good thing then yeah uh and if it's a bad thing then no way <laughs> <laughs> i thought that was pretty funny and then the next day there's a ring the ring at the door a doorbell rings and andy goes answers it and there's some guy with an accent who the, says, like, bonjour, and kisses her kisses on the hand. Kisses on the hand, and she is disgusted and yeah, slams I mean, is, the door in his face. It's a very forward thing, and she also has another very good line where she says, uh, we don't need any more Tupperware, <laughs> so go somewhere else to sell. That was so, funny. I did like that. Uh, God, you got your 24-piece set right here. <laughs> Uh, oh, so then good. it actually turns out that this guy rings the doorbell again, and he is the European replacement racer yep, that the dad picked dad up. Dad answers the door and is like, Bartholomew, I don't remember what uh, his, his name, name is. His name is Rene Cartier. Yeah. Or Cartier. Or Rolls right like off that. the tongue. And he is a tool. I do not like him right away. Yep, feeding into French stereotypes about them being snooty, uptight, and he just acts like he owns the place. To the point where he or even... he owns the people. Even. Yeah. To the point where he takes over Andy's room because he has westward sun. Yes, she walks into the room and he's sprawled out on her bed. And she's like, what the fuck, man? And he's like, I can't be waking up. I need all the rest I can get because the, the sun will wake me. And she's like, go to the damn garage. There ain't the no dad, sun there. And then the dad comes in. He's like, Andrea, it's okay. Let him do what he needs to do. Or, Andrea, let him do what he needs to do. He's yep. Pain the man. He's going to get sleep when he wants to sleep, where he wants to sleep. Disrespecting the whole family, putting the, the brothers to work on the bike. Oh, and yeah, yeah. He, he, like, belittles the younger brother, who's, like, the best he's mechanic. The, he's the engineer. He's the engineer, gearhead. Yep, yep. And he, like, says, I don't want somebody who can't reach the pedals working on my bike. And then the kid's like, huh? Eh? Eh? Huh? Eh? Huh? Yeah, and he, he is using the bike, and he's doing, like, I don't know, he's pushing it too hard and yeah, killing he, the he engine and stuff. He breaks it several stuff. times, like he does stuff, and, and like, the Andrew says, you know, he's, if he does that, he's going to break that, and then, literally, like, ten seconds later, he breaks breaks the bike, and, and he the, doesn't care about it either. He just no. gets off and goes inside of this dirty boots and stuff yeah and he's a douchebag the kids are like who the fuck is this guy who is this asshole <laughs> so they look him up yeah they thought his name sounded familiar and they uncover 
on the he internet an or a magazine that he is apparently yeah. multiple times he's been booted like, off of people. teams and, and in Europe. It's always because he like he injures other people or yeah. like runs them off he, the track. Yeah, for injuries, and... unsportsmanlike conduct. Just yeah. he's a. We've a already seen he's egg. an asshole, but he's an asshole on the track and, as and, well. And what the yeah, what they were saying is like no wonder Dad could find him. You know, all the other people were picked up, and this guy, you know, nobody wanted him because he's a prick. Yep. And furthering with the the theme of sexism and shitty people being shitty in this oh, movie yes. there is a scene where renee comes into the kitchen and sees andy washing dishes looks and, like you found your right spot or something yeah or just something. says just women belong in the, in the kitchen, kitchen pretty like, much jesus christ so man. andy does spray him with the detachable hose or whatever that some sinks have so not only do we have the dad not only do we have soapbox derby dad <laughs> and now we got this dude and then we have the snotty uh the daughter of the soapbox yeah. dirty. There's really dirty only dirty. like two and like maybe two and a half People good are... males in this movie. Yeah. The brothers and to a certain extent Dean, though he still has he grows some yeah, tendencies, some growing. But, but yeah, but the mo- the mom's cool. We like the mom, and yeah. Mm-hmm. So then uh, it's the day of Renee's first race, and yeah. Andrew and Andrea. It's confusing. Uh, they're yes. together, and they're running into Dean and Farron. So then yeah. Andrea says, oh, put this helmet on. She covers up his face as much as she can. And puts goggles on. So and that, Pretend to be me because yeah. she only knows you as me. Me as you. Yeah. So then no. it's pretty awkward because part of the time Dean is like infatuated with uh, he, he reckon- Andy where she's <laughs> talking some kind of yeah. bike stuff. And then he's just, do I know you? It's like, oh, we're twins. Must recognize the eyes or something. But then it's know, like, like, well, she doesn't look that much different than when she was Andrew. So it's just like, without the helmet, you know, or, or maybe he she is kind of girly stuff. He on, is dealing with some girl clothing and necklaces and stuff on. So conflicting internal thoughts. So yeah. they walk, they separate, goes separate ways. Cartier wins his first race, but he accomplishes this partially by cheating. checking. Or, yeah, I, they, it doesn't way. seem like he's cheating, but it is you know frowned, frowned upon. upon. Yes. So he checks some other biker. Then Andy drops by Dean's trailer area. What was her reasoning behind stopping there again? Uh, well, she just she, like pretending like she's just walking oh, by. It, what actually it was is the racer that got checked by Renee oh, was yeah. on she Dean's goes to check. team. Yes, she so goes to like, check to see how this guy is. How is Barrett, I think his name was. And they're like, I don't know. I think he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't going to race no more, so he's dead to me. But when she walks up on them, they're working Dean and like the whatever her, his helper are like working on a bike. And then they're they're puzzled of what to do. And she suggests something. And then the mechanic, She drops some real knowledge bombs. Yeah, the, the mechanic's like, you might be right. And he wanders off. He's, and he's not, he's he's not a European he does biker. not have the accent. Uh, but then Dean is basically just licking his lips at this yeah, point. Yeah, he's like, like damn. You, you and know, then he you starts about and... your bikes. And she's like, I just grew up around it, you know, when I was younger. I grew up around bikes and guys. And, and then, so they separate. And as she's walking away, yeah. Renee sees, uh, or Andy sees Renee talking to Mr. Henderson, who is Dean's team's owner. But he is a competitor. So there's something sketchy going on there. So she confronts Renee about it. And he's like, I don't fucking answer to you. None of your goddamn business. I've seen how a real team works. And, and the then dad he pushes her. Well, not quite yet. No. Because uh, the I don't think the dad would have been cool with that. But the dad's like, hey, it's cool. It's cool. Okay. He's fine. Okay, okay. Andy, go apologize to him. Before uh, the real confrontation happens, the mom comes in again to convince the Talk dad. Talk to the dad, yep. Or he says, it's like almost like a Columbo moment where she's like, oh, one question for you. How, how would you describe your daughter? And I thought this was going to be more like sexist stuff where he does first say like beautiful, but he says smart and, oh, she gets along with everybody. Hmm. Well, if she gets along with everybody, uh, why isn't she getting along with Renee? And the dad's like, fuck. (laughs) So then he goes, he's like, all right, I guess Renee is bad. And then this is where he's going to see her. And then Andy's like, I'm just trying to help my family. And Renee's like, fuck you. And pushes Pushes her. her. And the dad rolls up like, cracker, please. And then Renee's like, oh, you come to apologize to me, peasant? And he's like, actually, no, I take my apology back. And then he <laughs> walks away, and then he turns back around and says, you're fired. Yep. You're fired. He drops it. And then immediately afterwards, we get a decom dad moment with Andy, where yes. he's saying, hey, I don't think Carson Racing would have happened without your mom and you. You're holding us together, lifting us up. It's a nice moment for this character who has been pretty bad throughout most of the movie and he basically says hey 
you're our only hope now because we don't have a racer and Andrew can't race, but we're going to get you in there. So she starts to gear up for the race. There's some big momentous thing that the family gets the bike ready in time or something like that. Yes. But it's all huzzah. And then I love that Andrew continues the disguise in this movie that is apparently unbeatable, which is a baseball hat and sunglasses. Because if she's Andrew, he can't be Andrew, but he's not Andrew. He's just a guy with a baseball cap and sunglasses on. Perfect disguise. So then on the way to the race, Andy runs into Dean. Again, this is within her Andrew guys. She has all of her racing stuff on. So Dean thinks she's Andrew and starts to ask Andrew, Andy, (laughs) about her sister. Within her right, Andy's like, don't you have a girlfriend? And Dean's like, ah, nah, she sucks. (laughs) She fucking hates me. We don't like each other. Don't have a lot in common. Uh, But he's like, your sister seems pretty cool. So then she's like, okay, maybe I'll think about hooking you guys up later. Yeah. So then Renee quickly, I guess, gets signed by the Henderson team because now he's going to be racing for them because it wouldn't be too meaningful if we didn't have an actual antagonist in this final race, I guess. And not only that, Farron seems to have the hots for uh, Renee. So that's why also yeah. Dean's like, I, I think she likes French people. No, she so doesn't for, like me. Forget her. She was not worth his time. He's a much better. She deserves much better. So in the final race, Renee, of course, plays dirty. He's kind of cutting off Andy, pushes her off of the track for a bit. Yeah. But she catches back up to him. And she has some galaxy brain plan that I don't know if it's partially because her mom holds up a sign that says, watch the The last last turn. turn. Yeah. But so then she's alerted that, hey, this guy's probably going to try to do something. So as he's going to push her. Into the corner. Yeah. Push her off. Hard breaks. She breaks and then he flies off. Flies off. And then. She kicks it back into gear and takes it home. Yep. And she gets the first place. Yeah. So then Renee is pissed. And as Andy is celebrating and everybody's like, hey, good job, Andrew. He comes up and is like, that's some dirty trick. Something only a girl Girl would do. do. And then the ESPN correspondent is like, that is a serious (laughs) accusation. Uh, Do you want to elaborate on that? It's like, yeah. Why don't you you ask Andrew? And then they're like, so Andrew, what would you say? No, the other Andrew. The one over here. Yeah, they turn to Andrew in his disguise. He's like, what? Me? Huh? But I would have liked. I guess he's a guy, so he wouldn't do it, but it's like, uh, that's a serious accusation. Calling somebody a girl. Oh, my God. How could you do that? So then, yep, the the game is up. Everybody sees that Andy. The dad admits it, like, it's time to come clean, guys. So everybody knows that Andy is a girl now. Dean feels hurt because he was bearing his soul to his bro, and you lied to me. He told him things, her things in secret. And then Mr. Henderson is like, this is fucking bullshit. (laughs) There's got to be a rule. And And then then the mom, mom, who we saw earlier reading the rule book instead of her actual book where she was in her favorite part. It was set up that she was reading the book over a couple of scenes. So then she comes up and says, um, actually, there is a rule that a dog can play basketball (laughs) and that the, the girl can race. Well, what about an unregistered racer? Well, she registered under Andy. Andy. Andrea, short for Andy. So, yeah, it was like, fuck you, soapbox derby man. And that is is the last we see of Mr. Henderson. Yes, he's gone. He walks off with his cane and says, if it wasn't for you meddling girls. Yes, and then Renee Zellweger, too. We don't see him anymore. No, yeah, I don't think we do. So so we got two of the evils out of the way, and the daughter as well. She's done. Three of the evils all the way, and the dad is better. The dad is a better man. Andy's celebrating again. She's getting her interview of like, hey, what do you contribute your your victory for? And she says, I was able to win because of my family. Yeah. Everybody working together, supporting each other. And then they're like, well, what? I don't know if you're going to get the sponsorship because yeah, you kind of the, cheated. The big sponsorships. You see the one dude on his phone again. Yep. So we see the guy that we had seen before. And it's like, uh-oh, he's a guy. But he's accompanied with somebody else. So then we get the dramatic reveal of within uh, Lindsay Ellis's terms. Or I don't know if she created. She makes fun of people saying this a lot. Is uh, We see that the boss is actually a girl boss. And girl she's boss. taking charge. And they ask her, are you still going to give her the sponsorship? And she says, 
after everything she did, yep, impersonating she, her brother, yeah. all the stuff she went through, and it's all kind of built up like, oh no, she's not going to do it. She's like, I, yeah. hell yeah, I'm going to give it to her, succeeding in a sport. Going to give it to her whole damn family. We'll sign them all the contracts. Yeah. Succeeding in a sport for guys and showing everybody what for. Hell yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> that was cool. Yeah, it was a fun moment. It was good, but that's like the last that we really hear about the sponsorship. We don't really well, see what it amounts to. Not entirely. But so everybody's oh, like, yeah, hell yeah, true, yeah true, we got true, the sponsorship. Yep, we yep, see yep. Dean walking away through the crowd. Oh no! So we think he's done for. We're never going to see Mr. Dean. <laughs> oh, have again. you ever seen a decom? Yeah, it ain't over. So it ain't over. At some later time, the family is back at home, and yes. the mom says, "Oh, we just got our money or contract language from the sponsor." That we're able to hire a one or a two fifty racer. Yep, that's what it was. Because the different classes, Dean was a two fifty racer and Andy was like a one twenty five. I don't know if that has to do with something like motor size or something bike related. Yeah. But who are they gonna hire to be this two fifty racer? Walk outside and who is it? But Dean Talon. And Andy, again, starts to make some eyes at him. And she's like, oh, I thought you were over us. And he's like, oh, I hear you need a new racer. And she says, I'll race you 12 laps. And then we'll see if you get the job. So then the final shot of them, not, I wish it, they could have just like ridden the sunset, but they're riding around and they hit a jump, get some mad air. Boom, freeze frame. Doing a sick trick and freeze frame. Yeah, you can't finish a decom. Thought of freeze frame. I mean, Xenon, our last episode. It's a more fitting uh, freeze frame than a lot of movies. Because it is kind of like a whoa moment. Yeah. Yeah. That reasonably you could see, like, if this was a trick video for a motocross thing, they could have a freeze frame. But it is. Really, I should try to go back through all the movies you've watched so far count and all the freeze count frames. all of the ones that have ended with freeze frames. And, and, and it's then probably narrow those 50%. down to which ones deserving or are deserving of the freeze Well, frame. that's basically none of them. This one was okay. Well, yeah. No, I'm saying most yes. of them do yes. not. Correct. But yeah, it's probably about 50% or more have ended with freeze frames. Yes. Uh, so that was motocross. Or parties. Just dance parties. Oh, that's a smaller amount, but still a significant <laughs> number, probably like 25%. So that was Motocrossed. Again, another good decom. Yeah. I thought this was a pretty good one. It started off, I thought, kind of like, I don't know, it just started off really slow for me anyways. But I, I think as, I think when he, when he brought in Jean Valjean into the picture and stuff, you know, some well, of the, the... Once that happened, it's like, okay, this is the decom still. Yeah, because it, it is, it's... you know, kind of last minute conflict and villain. They threw a lot of stuff villain, in there at the end. And but... I'm like, okay, you got a little bit more action going and stuff like that that they had to resolve. And and not that I'm a huge Les Miserables fan, but Jean Valjean <laughs> is the good guy in that <laughs> movie. And you just know his name because the villain, at least in the movie, <laughs> the most recent movie, is Russell Crowe. And he says Jean Valjean all the time. <laughs> So, just clearing that out there, that uh, I'm so much more cultured than Jacob. Uh. Yeah, I think it was actually generally pretty well paced because we had multiple races and we saw some growth with her. And then getting better as a driver, but also as a guy. (laughs) Yeah. I know. She's the man. This is a. She she, Uh, she got better as a. We have the progression with her, and then there's a wrench thrown in that a couple of times. The biggest one with the dad coming home, which allowed there to be a a very clearly defined villain. A lot of good moments with the character's growth. I thought all the family members were pretty decent for once. The parents had interesting things to do. The the, the mom and little brother maybe didn't grow as much, but definitely like the dad did. Obviously, that was huge for me. And quite honestly, I think the love story stuff in this one is probably the best than any decom. Like, I'm not entirely goofing that, like, parts of this movie were pretty erotic. Like, yeah, that lake no, scene no. was like, whoa, no. was this TV Take 14? your shirt off. Take your clothes off. And she, she just has this s- smile to her. She's just like, oh, we're doing this. And I guess some of that could not, probably not that specific <laughs> scene, but some of that could come from that I think this movie is partially inspired by shakespeare's 12th night which uh, i believe has some kind of cross-dressing switcheroo kind of nonsense in that which is interesting because of course in shakespeare's time men played women so in this play would be men playing a woman pretending to be a man oh my goodness meta stuff but yeah i I kind of feel like the scene at like the shop where they're doing the doppelganger stuff i feel like that has to have been 
I, I don't want to say like they could have come up with that for a decom, but that seems too inspired. No. And I also appreciated how generally the sports focused decoms I'm not the biggest fan of. And sometimes there's some subversions of that, like Rip Girls wasn't really that much of a surfing movie. No. This was very much a motocross movie. All the time. But it had good interpersonal and sync concerts mixed in there <laughs> yeah, that was a fun bit but it had good character moments beyond just the typical kind of stuff you'd expect in one of these sports decoms yeah. so i'd say you know like you gave it a three out of five to begin yeah with. i think it's like this is another one Still where that three this is like a good kids or family sports movie yeah not really any like goofiness that indicates it was it's a not decom. it's not a weird supernatural movie or anything it's like a you know something that could actually happen i yeah. guess a little bit out there but it's it's, yeah. it's plausible so if you want to tell us about the plausibility of motocross as a decom you can yeah. write to us at a whole new pod at gmail.com yes, like adele did oh she writes uh i set fire to the rain oh my no just kidding uh she writes she sent me a YouTube link for a College Humor video saying, someone at College Humor listening to the pod? Definitely a possibility. What? Which then she hurriedly responded shortly after, oh my goodness, I completely missed the chance to say it's a pod stability. Keep up the good work, guys. Uh, we'll allow your slight mistake, misstep, but you corrected it very quickly. So if I remember, I'll link to this video uh, in the description for the episode. But it's actually no. a pretty funny College Humor video. I... Would love to think it's inspired by our podcast, <laughs> but I'm sure we're not the only people mining the rich vein that is Disney Channel original movie nostalgia. But yeah. they really focused on, and this really hit home for me, the different types of decoms that exist, where they were really focused on the ones of some magical or supernatural thing happening yeah. to somebody yeah. and changing their life. So luck of the Irish. So those are the ones that they really year. like. Those, those well, are their favorites. Well, those are the ones that were referenced in the video. Oh, okay, gotcha. And yeah. You yep. can try to search for my comment, which probably won't be very, very easy to find. But I did comment under the podcast channel because at one point a character says, oh, the luck of the Irish, the movie where a kid <laughs> finds out he's a leprechaun <laughs> and it changes his life. 13th year where a boy turns out he's a mermaid and it changes his life. Or horse sense where a girl learns she can talk to horses <laughs> and it changes her life. And I commented, uh, 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 that is ready to run. Oh. Would Horse Sense been a much better title? Yes. Oh. But in Horse Sense, nobody has True. any, like, special magical ability. So they done fucked up. Or do they? So that makes me think they don't listen to the podcast because <laughs> they uh, screwed up such an easy thing. Yes. But it's easy to forget that Ready to Run is actually a movie. And it's yeah. quite bad. So that's where I'm like, oh, yeah, there really is like so many that we've encountered so far. It's very often like supernatural thing that like affects somebody's life. So Halloween Town, 13th year, yes. to a certain extent, even like Can of Worms because the guy's like, am I an alien? <laughs> uh, that kind of thing. Sports movies, I would say, is a solid second category. Yeah. And you can have sports and supernatural stuff which happens in luck of the irish i believe and it's, also when, when are we getting that year. one I, uh, when are we i think that is irish? actually is that very soon up? it might even okay. be the next one. Oh man i'm pumped uh and then the third one at least i can think of right now which we haven't gotten to no. yet as like a solid prototype for a decom would be musical high school musical yeah. which they also talk about some of that stuff no. in this movie uh thank you for writing in yeah, adele thank you adele and a very rare time, multiple emails to wow. be read. Oh, my uh, goodness. I got to kill a bit of time to scroll to the other one. So then we have another email coming in from Dustin. Who has appeared on the pod before. We could say friend of the show, Dustin. Yeah. Hey, I know this guy. Yes, Dustin checks in. Once so he again. says hello again. Maybe he'll say hello to you guys in person at some point in the future. Ooh, Who knows? Again. Exactly. Again. Hopefully this email will get answered before the Oscars happens, but just curious who you guys each think will win awards for the following category. So I think this was inspired by the fact in the last episode, me talking about my letterboxed account being like, yeah. hmm, I've got Ratings. hot takes, but yes. only hot takes that I'll have in star format because I can't be bothered to write words. Yeah. I also appreciate Dustin recognizing that we sometimes aren't the most timely, but hey, we are getting this episode <laughs> out before the Oscars happen so we yes. can have... 
our main takes takes our predictions so he's asking for just four of the bigger categories of best picture best actor actress and then director is it is it arthur fleck that i want to shout out here so for best picture the the candidates are ford versus ferrari the irishman jojo rabbit joker little women marriage story 1917 once upon a time in hollywood Ooh. and parasite i i haven't seen it but honestly I, I'm, I'm giving i'm feeling good vibes from 1917 that was dustin's pick okay and I have seen it, and it's a good movie. I'm not as yeah. hot on it as some people. But trying to mentally think about this, and I am generally not. Joker's out of it for you. We know that. Well, it's a difference between what I want to pick and what, what I think, think would they, be yes. picked. Yep. And that's why I was going back through some of the more recent picks for the Oscars, where there has been a combination of unique picks, but also sometimes trying to send a message thing. So yeah, last yeah. year was Green Book, which people were not very happy about winning, but it was at least from the Academy's point of view being like, hey, we're picking a movie about racism, racism. and stuff. And yep. then going back a few years, we had Spotlight, which was about the sex and molesting scandals with Catholic priests. And then yep. you had some stuff like Moonlight, which was, you know, them being able like, hey, diversity, or even to a certain extent, The Shape of Water, because it was Guillermo del Toro, so who you is think one of those? Mexican. Yeah. So with that being said, and me trying to like mind game this, yeah. uh, and also 1917, in recent years, there's been other war movies like Dunkirk or oh, yeah, yeah, Hacksaw yeah. Ridge, and they get nominated for Best Picture. But even Saving Private Ryan didn't win Best Picture. I so believe that year went to not Shakespeare likely, in Love, which was maybe partially due to Harvey Weinstein's influence. But I'm hey, sure there's hey, betting hey. odds and stuff out there with this stuff, yeah. too. So this would be something for our friend Sean, who always does a ballot. <laughs> so with that being said, there are some possibilities. I could see Joker, maybe. Really? Just because, I mean, they already win Gonzo for the awards. I don't think it will win. Because they kind of talk about mental health and But stuff. it's an opportunity where, and I already think this is why it got nominated for so many, because people were like, the Academy's out of touch. They don't care about popular movies. And this oh, was one where, the, hey, one of the bigger a comic book movie year. came out that was ostensibly slightly artistic, even though it was yeah. largely aping other movies like Taxi Driver and things like yeah, that, yeah. that, hey, we can give it all these nominations so people will be like, hey, we take movies seriously. Would they go far enough? Is to there I enough of the like win, a, a hive victory? mind body that they're saying, hey, let's pick this to show that, hey, comic book movies, we consider those good? I don't think that would happen. I wouldn't mind seeing the Joker win, personally. I would be... You, I... If cut. Joker... I. You, uh, people always say awards away. who cares about awards just no and i like awards some of these allow me to get recommendations for movies i probably wouldn't have seen otherwise yeah and also just it's sometimes fun to see movies you like win, win a bunch of awards yeah like the return of the king with that one 11 oscars i had a lot of fun with that yep. if joker wins all 11 awards uh -huh. is nominated for and ties the lord of the rings which You'd won't happen no i won't but even but... if it wins best picture i think i'd have to be like yeah, I don't think I care <laughs> about these anymore. So with that being said, I actually think they might give it to Parasite because... Oh, that's the it Korean, is already, Korean one? Or? Uh, yeah, it's Korean. So it's oh, already yeah, notable for being a, a Korean movie. So that yep. can allow them to push a diversity Have you angle. seen that one? I have. And I, I, I like that okay. of the movies nominated that I've seen, I've seen The Irishman, Joker, 1917, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and Parasite. No. Parasite is far away my favorite of those, okay. but I'm still not so as hot could... on it as other people. All right. But it has a lot of it's buzz. It's won a for lot. It. It's been winning a lot of awards at other. So with it, they can hit two birds with one stone. It's the first like international foreign language film no. winning. It's a Korean movie kind of tied to those two. And also it does have a very, the message and themes of the movie are tied around capitalism. So it's also a politically in touch with the times kind of choice. So with those kind of things, it's still kind of a wild pick, but I feel like it has enough going for it that, again, if they're doing it strategically, which seems to be the case with some of the movies just that have come out recently. Get that one out of the way and have people not be upset about it winning. Yeah, or at least, you know, the Academy, there's some old people that are out of touch, but they try to stay in touch. They're, oh, a lot of people are talking about this movie. People are telling us to eat the 1% or something. Hey, uh, sure, let's go with Parasite. Yeah. Uh, alternatively, I could see maybe Once Upon a Time in Hollywood because really? 
the Academy loves movies about movies and making movies. Yeah. So, but True. other than that, I, I, I do like Parasite. That's a good one. Parasite so that, that's, or, that's my mind game of how I got to that. Parasite or 1917. You heard it here first. So yes, Dustin picked 1917 for his pick. Now moving on to best actor. We have Antonio Banderas in Pain and Glory. Leonardo DiCaprio in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Adam Driver in Marriage Story. Joaquin Phoenix in Joker. And Jonathan Price in The Two Popes. I really like Joaquin Phoenix. I think he... It's obviously a, a different Joker with like the, the ratings of the movies from being PG-13 to rated R. So he, he had a little bit more leeway. He says, crazy he says and, like the curse words like... <laughs> piss and poop <laughs> just, just like kind of like how like gnarly it was you know and bloody and stuff well, it, like that and, dark and it is and important stuff. to note that there is an established thing where it's obviously a separate character but somebody yeah. has already won an oscar for the joker so the academy is comfortable picking a, a quote-unquote comic book character yeah. of course some of that could have been surrounding the fact that Heath Ledger died. So yeah. it was posthumous award. Joaquin's- I do think there is a good chance for Joaquin to win yeah. for this role. No, I, I think he did it justice. Not the biggest. I, I like Joaquin Phoenix. Uh, I think he's been nominated for movies that I think he was better I, in. I, I kind of want him to win just so I can hear his speech. <sighs> he's been given some really interesting yeah, speeches. Yeah. I mean, some of like the media discourse around Joker was really extreme and ridiculous and blown out of proportion. He'd probably really like grill him, or he'd probably really kind of go off, I guess, in his thing. And that's the thing is when that movie was like, oh, people are like, it's going to inspire violence. Like, that's stupid. It was so stupid where it's one of those things where it's like, I really wanted to like the movie because it'd be like, oh, I'm sticking it to and I'm being edgy. But I watch it. I'm like, I just I don't get it. I think the hype is overblown. So I'm just saying, I went into wanting to like it. I like Joker. I like Batman. I like Joaquin Phoenix, but I think he's been better in other movies like okay. The Master or Her or even a movie I also wasn't that crazy about. You Were Never Really Here. He's a very good actor, so I'm yeah. fine with him winning. Yeah. I would prefer it for a different performance. So I think that's a good chance. And then for some of these others, like it, it could be Antonio Banderas. I haven't seen that movie. And it could even be for Jonathan Price because sometimes... It's like, hey, this actor's been around for a long time. He hasn't ever won something. Adam Driver's got some run behind him. People like Yeah, Adam and Adam Driver Driver's too. a very good actor as well. Yeah. And the new Star Wars movies mostly did a disservice to him. So I could see Jonathan Price being like, he's an established, long-running actor. He's never won. That's what happened where I think... With Leo DiCaprio. Well, yeah, I mean, but he's not like as old. But I think uh, the Steven Spielberg movie, Bridge of Spies, the guy, he was like an older guy. He won for that. And everybody's like, What? Why no. this movie? And I like I, a pity vote. You're saying not necessarily or, or, a pity vote, but I mean the audience long, being long like thing old deserving. And yeah. So, but I think I probably would say the better bet is Joaquin Phoenix. Yeah. That'll allow them to. I mean, that movie is his movie. It allows them to give the biggest nod to the Joker without having it to give more awards like Best Picture to it. Yeah. Uh, and I believe Dustin picked Joaquin Phoenix. Yes. Good, so then good, actress good. in a leading role, we have Cynthia Erivo for Harriet, which is uh, some people have made some funny commentary about the Oscars nominating only one black actor or actress for a major award. And it being like she plays Harriet Tubman. So people have been like, oh, that's, of course, a very important role. So we have to nominate her. Yeah. I haven't seen the movie. I'm sure it's fine. And I'm sure she's good in it. I know some people were like, come on. But Scarlett Johansson for Marriage Story. Swarsha Ronan, I believe is how that's said, for Little Women. Charlize Theron for Bombshell. And Renee Zellweger for Judy. So this is a very hard one because I haven't seen uh, literally any of these movies. So this is largely going for a blind bet. Dustin has said Scarlett Johansson for this. Who oh, That's I re- a name I know. <laughs> Interestingly, she was nominated also for a supporting actress award for Jojo Rabbit. Oh. So she gets like double nominated, which was interesting. Whoa. So I think Scarlett Johansson could be a good pick. The Cynthia Revo who played Harriet again could be like, hey, we're not racist. Racist, yeah. Uh, but I would say as far as trying to be like politically minded, I could see them giving it to Charlize Theron for Bombshell because that's a very you know, me too kind of movie and 
political stuff. That's the the analytical way yeah. I'm looking at no, this. No, you're right, though. Or Renee Zellweger for Judy. I've heard she's good in that. And that's another established actress who's been along for a while that maybe a lot of people like and want to her to give her something yeah yeah i, I don't really have an opinion on this one i guess so dustin uh, for harriet i think it's okay pick scarlett johansson for marriage story which it's on netflix i've been meaning to watch it i just no, haven't I, gotten I, around I do, to yep, it. i do want to watch that one and then if i can scroll down just so i can make sure i get the right names for the directors for the Right, movies, though I should know most of them. So now for directors. Uh, the guy for Parasite's going to win. The Irishman, Martin Scorsese, Todd Phillips for The Joker. Please, God. At the very least, I don't want Todd Phillips to win a bunch <laughs> of stuff. Uh, Sam Mendes for 1917, Quentin Tarantino for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and Boong Joon Ho for Parasite. Parasite. So this is another very hard <laughs> one yeah. to pick. Dustin picked. Sam Mendes for 1917, yeah. which you, if you don't know, a big conceit of that is the one shot take kind of style for it, which technically should be more of a cinematography thing, but the distinction's not always made. So I could see this also being one kind of like giving Joaquin Phoenix the Oscar for the Joker. They give yeah. it to Sam Mendes for 1917 to be like, this was a, a technically impressive movie. It's not best picture, but hey, like good directing. And it could also oh, be man. Quentin Tarantino because he's never won a directing Oscar. And he's got good movies. You know, people like Martin Scorsese. He's old and has been around for a while, made a lot of movies. And who knows how many more uh, Tarantino's going to make? Yeah, just one or two more, I yeah, think. I, so, he's so yeah, around. this is a hard one. So this is another one where I could cover my bases and try to be like right for two different ones because I could see also the same way being like, hey, we might we didn't pick it for best picture, but here Parasite, Parasite wins best win director. director. So yeah. I'll go with a wild card and say, actually, you know what? I'll say I'll say Boon Joon Ho as well to go over our picks one more time. Uh, Dustin, because everybody mostly cares about what Dustin says. Yeah. Dustin says best picture 1917. Actor Joaquin Phoenix. Actress yeah. Scarlett Johansson. Director Sam Mendes. So big on 1917 for Dustin. Yeah. I say Best Picture, Parasite, Actor. I also say Joaquin Phoenix, Actress. I said Charlize Theron and Director Boon Joon-ho. Yeah. Telejohn is saying for Best Picture. 1917. 1917. Now we're going to Joaquin Phoenix for Best Actor. And then the actress from Harriet. Okay. And then... um, To show our our whiteness that we don't remember her name. (laughs) but. Uh, and then Boom Jun Ho as well for yes, director. For, for director, correct. All right, so we'll, we'll follow back. We'll follow up with our. You, uh, you can see how right or wrong we were, and uh, no. I think it's actually not even this next weekend. It's the weekend after, so we had okay. time to get it. But Dustin yeah. was still right to be like, I don't know if you guys will get this <laughs> done in time. So hopefully, you enjoyed our long-winded analysis takes for yeah. movies very different from what we normally talk about and that we're also probably not that qualified to actually talk about. <laughs> Thank you, Adele and Dustin, for your questions yeah. and uh, keep them coming. So again, yes, the address is a whole new pod at gmail.com. Follow us on Twitter at a whole new pod, yeah. all one word. Follow Jacob on Twitter at Jacob underscore Telejohn, J-A-C-O-B underscore T-E-L-L-I-J-O-H-N. You can check in with me and follow me on Letterboxd. Or at, Byte. Yes. Letterboxd or Byte, which Byte I have not done anything with, but both are fat underscore tomato. Yeah. And Jacob, you, do you want to plug I'm, your, I'm your very, very appropriate name? J-E-R-K-E-R on Byte. You got it there. Day one. OG. Get in and on there. OG name. And then subscribe, rate us, review us on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, follow us on Spotify. Do them on all the platforms. Give us those subscriptions. Give us those likes. Leave some comments. Write some reviews. Comments specifically, more likely on YouTube. YouTube. Subscribe to us there. Like our videos. Help us try to beat out all the haters on our 13th year video. Yes, please. Yeah, I think that about covers it all. It does. And thank you for tuning in for another episode of A Whole New Pod. Yeah. And this is where... After all that Oscars talk, again, my mind just fried. But you know what? Thought of one other prediction we can make. And I'll say, the big dog, Roman Reigns, going to take it home tonight in the WWE Royal Rumble Big Bam Slam. Good call. Good pick.
You know, they say all men are created equal, but you look at me and you look at small Joe, and you can see that statement is not true. See, normally if you go one-on-one -on -one with another wrestler, you got a 50-50 chance of winning. But I'm a genetic freak, and I'm not normal. So you got a 25% at best at beating me. And then you add Kurt Angle to the mix, your chances of winning drastically go down. See, the three-way at sacrifice, you got a 33 and a third chance of winning. But I, I got a 66 and two-thirds chance of winning because Kurt Angle knows he can't beat me, and he's not even going to try. So, Small Joe, you take your 33 and a third chance minus my 25% chance, and you got an eight and a third chance of winning at sacrifice. But then you take my 75% chance of winning if we used to go one-on-one -on -one, and then add 66 and two-thirds percent. I got 141 and two-thirds chance of winning at sacrifice. See, Joe, the numbers don't lie, and they spell disaster for you at sacrifice.